large clearing, I can't help but feel some unseen processes shaping the growth patterns of this reef. What invisible borders am I crossing? Tall stalk. Stalks of this kind seem to produce different bubbles depending on the nearby stalks. They're protectors of their colonies. Glittering stalk. This thin stalk sits among the bed of other growths, exuding bright bubbles through its pores. That is a shrill sack. Another shrill sack. Another one. Rock outcrop. The scattered boulders and steep rifts of the southern reef suggest a violent geological past. Isolated stalk. Unlike the other specimens, this large stalk sits alone, away from the lower beds. It's hard to tell if this is the beginning of a colony or its end. Stalk passage. The stalks are more sparse between these rock outcrops. This might be the easiest path north, if I can clear the way. forest. The stalks are so thick here. A sea of amber, waving fingers that must be cleared before we can pass through. The relative calm of this basin means the water is clogged with spores released by the larger stalks. So this is something we've already scanned. Forest path. Ah, yes. So this is going to link up with the area before we went underwater. <laughs> underwater, we're always underwater. Before we went into the lower cavern. So I should be able to open this up. That's so cool. I wonder if it's going to stay like that for a long time or just for a little bit. Okay, I feel like there's something we didn't explore. For example, now that we have more power, we might be able to go to uh, the place that the current was too strong. Yeah, here, I believe. I don't know, it still shows you can't do it. Strong current. It doesn't show any improvement to my power, but it does show it to oxygen. Well, I don't know, let's throw it in there. That do anything? No. I guess the shrill sack is not the one we used for power, so it looks like it's only good for oxygen and the other calcium carbonate ones are for power. So let's go north. does. The, the stocks do come back.
shelled creature. The delicate set of feeding appendages beneath the creature's shell seemed to scrape the outer membrane of the stalks away. Forest clearing. Navigating these dense growths is like finding your way in a labyrinth, moving from clearing to clearing with little sense of what's ahead. Glittering stalk. Bubbles like huge pearls glint among the stalks. How do the tall stalks produce these strange screeching sacks? Tall stalk. Some creatures target these tall stalks directly. Perhaps because they keep them away from the other, softer stalks nearby? Stalk patterns. The growth patterns of the stalks suggest a complex territorial network. Are we underestimating the complexity of these life forms? Named. I'm going to call these signal stalks for the signaling role they play in the stalk ecology. Tall bubble producing stalks that protect and monitor stalk colonies, a key part of the stalk network that stretches across the reef. Shelled creature. Occasionally, when the creature scrapes the stalks too aggressively, they retract and let out a defensive signal to nearby colonies. Oh! I scared that animal away with my scan. Shelled creature. There seems to be some tolerance for the creature's scraping by the stalks. They only warn the creature when it cuts too deeply. Oh, can we get more samples? Ah, oh, we can. Oops. New species logged. I'm naming these stock scrapers for obvious reasons. You can check my notes back at the base. A large creature with a translucent shell and jointed legs for swimming and feeding grazes on the membranes of reef stalks. Glittering stalk. More bubble producing stalks. Are they sentries designed for early warnings or last ditch defenses of the colony's core? clear path. East and west are stalks as far as the eye can see. They fade off into the silt like the towers of a miniature city. Mm, these are just more shrill sacks. Yeah, we don't need more. Upper forest. This isn't a forest, but it carries the atmosphere of one, being immersed in interlocking natural processes of life and death. So we could go there if we use a shrill sack, but not yet. Spore clusters. Spores from the stalk seem to be massing here in large clumps. This might be a good place to sample them. I scared a couple creatures. Now, are these also shrill sacks? No. Totally different stock spores. Uh, 
A stock spore containing a complex cocktail of minerals and compounds. 5% fungal. Can be used to give me a little bit of power. Oh, do we... Are we using up power as we move? That made the bar a little bit bigger. I guess I... To go north, I probably need a lot of samples of things. Probably this is not the great greatest thing to use because it doesn't seem to do much for the power. But yeah, I haven't been looking at my power to see whether it's going down. Agile creature. I've noticed smaller spotted variants of these creatures. Another species. Or perhaps sexual dimorphism. These might be the males. There we go. Spore catcher. I'm going to call these spore catchers, as they're so eager to gather the stock spores. Agile, jet-propelled creatures with colorful mantles, found hidden amongst reef stock colonies, feeding on their spores. Oh, it did take a bit of power. Yeah, we actually went through quite a bit of power doing that. Does it also take power to scan? Sorry if I scare any creatures. It doesn't seem like it. Twin stones. These two boulders are covered with tiny stalks. A coating of amber fur waving in the currents. Forest's Edge, the last line of thick stalks before the sandy plains of the Central Reef. That's it. We're through. This place is overwhelming. So many new species. This is the central reef. I saw on Monet's maps that the shell flattens out here. Rippling silt. Ripples of silt bounce, uh, bounce sunlight back up through the water, giving it a golden glow. Shady outcrop. The water beneath this outcrop feels cool, oceanic. Soft currents scrape sand from the rock face. stones. A set of smooth stones sitting together in a pile. Could a creature have gathered these here? Is this a nest? I want to get over here to this one I wasn't able to get to before. Just to see if perhaps I can take samples there. Hmm, nope. Central Plain. The center of the reef is flat and sandy. With few rocks to attach to, the stalks struggle to seed these waters. There it is. I see the way station ahead. Way station. A way station set up by Manay Nomura. 
It's seen better days, but it still functions beneath the coating of stalks. This place is looking a little worse for wear. Let me see if I can find an access port. Renee never did take care of her equipment. Some things never change. Sorry. Give me a sec. I'm just trying to... Got it. Okay, we should be able to access any data stored here. Just open the terminal and take a look. Ah. And then power up oxygen down. Is that to like refill? Oh, it is. Yes. Thank you, Waystation. Um, spoofing user, Dr. Mene Namura, last accessed, history cleared. Why was the history cleared? Log download, yes or no? Yes. Sync complete. Data released to pilot's console. Logs have been cleared. I expected that, given the secrecy Mene seems to be operating under. But the map, the map data mentions something Mene calls the Bloom, out across the northern rift. She's been going back and forth to something there, studying it. A unique species, perhaps? Nay. What are you doing here? Why were you keeping this discovery from the world? From me? I'm talking to myself again. Or to... whatever you are. Sorry, I don't mean... Let's head back to the research base. I need to think. With this way station operational, we can call in the base's retrieval drone from the utility panel. This drone will be able to pick us up from any area we've got map data for. Let's head to the base. I've got a lot to figure out. Mapped region connection available. Uh, but I can't... Oh. Gotta connect. Connection complete. Drone ready. Request retrieval. Um, hold on. I want to see if... Oh, there's lots of stuff around here. But we'll be coming back here. Transitioning. Again, called out. Downtime, 4.2 hours. Oh, what is... Uh, hey, are you back online? Yes. Pretty sharp work for a biologist, if I do say so myself. Hooking up that strange casing of yours to the base took some work. And the OS here does not play nicely with whatever you are. But you should have access to select subsystems of the stack now. Manet looks to have repurposed some of them, so not everything is functional. The comms are shot, the generator is only partially working, and one of the retrieval drones is missing. But I've booted up the dive bay's mapping systems and sample storage. The lab is also online, with analysis tools and an integrated taxonomy for logging creatures. Now take a look. I've already logged the creatures we discovered on our last dive. For any logged creatures, I'll also put sample requests in their taxonomy entries. To fulfill these requests, just find and transfer the samples to the lab, then analyze them. I can then use that data to add to the creature study. We need to register these species. Head down to the lab level and take a look. I'll also mark sample requests on the dive map. That way we can grab key samples from our studies while we're out in the ocean. And we are going back out soon. While you were offline, I spotted a signal. A suit transponder. You can see its location on the dive map. I want to find it. A suit transponder means a suit, and a suit means... Manet. I'll need your help. That suit takes both of us to pilot it, and it's the only one I've got. Once you're done exploring the base, load into the dive map. We can head out from there. I'm so excited. This is so cool. I can access all these different levels. Well, sort of, maybe. Not everything's online. 
modular base stack. So yeah, I'm just accessing this as the AI. Comms are shot, signal error, antenna damaged. Habitat, crew terminal, user Ellery Voss. Life support's good. Bay, there's the dive map. The lab, so we're gonna take a look at that, but let's look at the other stuff. Uh, med bay, not active. Generator, running at 34% efficiency. Oh, it's cool the way it goes back and forth. Pistons working. Observation, sonar system, inactive, requires crew. So, to the lab. Sample analysis or taxonomy. Let's check out sample analysis first. Oops. Hmm. Because there's nothing in there? Taxonomy. Animalia novi. Animals. Fungi, plants, bacteria. Let's check out animals. Oh, that's so cool. It's, well, it's a taxonomy. Soft bodies. We have the spore catcher. Spore catcher. Legulus striatus. Observations. Spore catchers are small, soft-bodied creatures which move quickly through the water by using siphon jets. Their mantles, stripped with, uh, striped with bright colors that shift as they swim, allow the creatures to modify their movement through the water with precise flapping motions. Watching them navigate the water is hypnotic, their rapid turns and loops showing incredible agility, flitting through the water like a bat or bird. Spore catchers use this wide range of movement to pursue the various fungal spores that are produced by the reef's stalks. The spore catchers seem to be highly selective about which spores they wish to consume, suggesting that analysis of the stalk spores might tell us more about the spore catcher's behavior and diet. So I need to analyze the stalk spores. Okay. Behavior. Need. Sketch study completion required. What is this? Um, I think, oh, I think that's to full screen the sketch that doesn't exist. So there's nothing there. So egg sample analysis required for theories for behavior, food sample analysis required, which is the spores. Jointed shell creatures. Stock scraper. Stock scrapers are large, translucent shelled creatures with a distinctive swimming motion, which feeds primarily on stock colonies. Surprisingly nimble, despite their size, stock scrapers use some of their modified limbs to swim through the water and others to scrape away the chitinous membrane of the stalks. This is tolerated by the stalks to some degree although they will also deploy shrill sacks to scare the scrapers away. Stock scrapers seem to be one of the more socially active of the reef creatures, and will call to each other when grazing or when frightened. Each specimen has a unique cloud pattern on its shell. I wonder how these are formed and what their significance is within communities. Fungi, fungal stalks, the reef stalk. Reef stalks are fungal life forms which take the form of a series of stalks and plates anchored to rocky substrates. Their chitin exterior ranges in color from dark amber to acid yellow, leading them to resemble oversized lichens. This outer membrane is marked with slits which expand and contract, producing a distinctive hum. These slits or pores also allow both the release of spores by each colony and the absorption of other colonies' spores. I'm using this term for ease, but are these really seeds or something else? 
Both the hum and the spore exchange seem to be a part of a complex communication network between the individual stock patches or colonies. However, life like earth fungi, the visible part of these stalks may only be a small part of their overall mass. What networks might connect these colonies beneath the ground? Sing stalk. Sing stalks are towering fungal stalks that, through swaying, produce a distinctive hum or groan. Part of the stalk ecology found on the central reef, the precise role of sing stalks is particularly obscure. Their singing seems to connect with a sonic communication between stalks, as seen from the stalks use of shrill sacs as an alarm mechanism, but what they are communicating remains unclear. Notably, sing stalks are often coated in sporing fungal growths, which release spores as the stalks sway through the water. These spores, released high up in the water column, cover a large area of the reef. There is something tree-like in the structure of the sing stalk, so much so that they give the impression of an underwater fungal forest, strange and yet familiar. Signal stalk. Signal stalks are tall, thin, bubble-coated stalks which are often found beside other stalk colonies. Like other colloids, uh, other fungal stalks, signal stalks have a chitin exterior, but unlike other species, they feature prominent erising pores that allow them to produce the large bubbles I've named shrill sacs. Through this, signal stalks act as the protectors of stalk colonies, their shrill sacs breaching when predators approach resulting in a warning screech that causes nearby stalks to retract. This makes them a target for creatures which graze on the stalks, and only some colonies are able to maintain a signal stalk protector. But how do these stalks produce their bubbles, and what dictates their growth patterns? Further analysis of their physical products and structure should help. Oops, I didn't mean to totally get out of that. Oh, I guess the reason I couldn't go to the others is because there are no others. So... I need to... What? I need to drag things into the base to analyze, right? But I don't see anything I can do here. Sample store. Ah, this will help. Well, let's transfer one of each. is complete. Signal stock taxonomy entry updated. Okay. Let's do that one too. Multiple taxonomy entries updated. And then now this is here with a like a cross over it. Does that mean you study this so no need to study anymore? Probably. Ah, behaviors updated. So, for the spore catcher, analysis of the unique chemical compounds found in stock spores and a wider understanding of how stocks use spores to communicate suggests a more mutual relationship between spore catchers and stocks than initially assumed. If stocks are able to tailor the chemical makeup of their spores, it is possible that the select spores the catchers eat are intended for their consumption and contain compounds and minerals attractive to this species. As spore catchers use their color-shifting properties to hide among stock colonies, it seems increasingly possible that stock colonies and spore catchers are mutualistically linked, 
and catchers serve the needs of specific stock patches. What those needs are, however, is not yet clear. Analysis of a spore catcher egg, if found, may help us gain a full picture of their physiology. Reef stock's been updated. Analysis of stock spores have revealed a rich cocktail of compounds unique to each spore, some of which are previously unknown to human chemistry. This aspect of the spores and their noticeable exchange between colonies of stalks suggests that these chemical cocktails are part of an information exchange network. However, some of these spores also appear to be true spores, used for the asexual reproduction of stalk colonies, suggesting that the information-carrying spores are adapted or modified reproductive spores. Analysis also suggests that stalk colonies may possess a high level of intelligence in cognition, and that the messaging provided by the spores is nuanced and even subjectively unique to each colony. Patterns across multiple spores from a single colony even suggest a chemical signature possessed by each stock group. Could these be thought of as stock names? Signal stock. Shrill sac laboratory analysis shows that they're formed from a coating of mucus sealed around a pressurized mix of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The oxygen shows that the signal stalks are able to absorb, absorb oxygen from their surroundings, perhaps through their large pores. Meanwhile, the CO2 must be the result of a fermentation process within the stalk itself. This suggests the presence of a fungal symbiote similar to yeast within the stalk, and the possible production of ethanol as a byproduct of this process though a tissue sample will be necessary to confirm this. Shrill sac production, meanwhile, seems to be a precise art. The pressurization, gas mix, and size of each shrill sac can differ from stock to stock, meaning that warnings can be directed to particular colonies and even individual stocks if necessary. This is so cool. I love this. I think that's everything. I think it's time to go to the dive map. Map to regions. So this is where we are. Kind of off the map. That's the way station. Sample request. Ah, those symbols are for sample requests. Singstock tissue. Reef stock root. And what is this? Obstruction. Manet's notes mention something called the bloom across this rift. But until we have stronger propulsion, we won't be able to cross it. Ah. Yeah, let's head back to the way station. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. I certainly have. I'm really, really loving this game. The aesthetic, how interesting it is to learn all these things about these alien species. Ah, it's really cool. So, hope you've enjoyed, and we'll be back soon to gather some samples, understand these creatures more, and I think upgrade our propulsion system. <laughs>